Welcome back for part two of the TVM problem videos in which we'll tackle some slightly more nuanced problems. Let's get into the first one. Your daughter has graduated university today with $12,000 in her bank account. Knowing that her education was funded with the power of compound interest, she wants to find a similar way to save up $1 million one day. She finds a retirement savings plan that pays interest compounded at 2% quarterly. How many years does she have to wait to reach that goal? At first glance, this question can seem quite simple and straightforward, and for the most part it actually is. However, there's one important caveat to keep in mind. The rate that we are given is a quarterly compounding rate, and at the end of the question we're asked to find the number of years that your daughter will have to make the investment for. When we calculate the end value with the given rate and future value and present value, we're actually going to get the number of quarters because again the rate is a quarterly compounding rate and that's not going to give us the number of years but fortunately this is an easy fix when we get the end value all we have to do is divide by four so we get the number of years and we just have to do this at the end of the question it's important to note it out at the start so you remember so again like the previous questions in the last video we just find the formula which for n is natural log of future value divided by present value and all of that divided by the natural log of 1 plus r and we plug in the values that we already know so we know that the future value is equal to the one million dollar goal that your daughter has set we know that the present value is equal to the twelve thousand dollars in her account and we know that the rate is a 2% quarterly compounding rate, or 0 0.02, which is what we're going to put into the formula. And so we plug these values in, natural log of 1 million divided by 12,000 divided by the natural log of 1.02, which should be equal to 223.3 three five quarters however the partial quarters are not going to work uh, we know that we don't get money in between the quarters we get money only on each quarterly date so we're going to have to round this value up to 224 and then we know this is the number of quarters and we have to divide that by four and when we do so we get the number of years is equal to 56 so this is our final answer Let's move on to the last question. Bank of Scarborough pays 5% simple interest each year. Bank of Toronto pays 5% compounded interest each year. You deposit $5,000 in each bank for 25 years. Which account will have more money in it at the end of the 25 year period? How much more money will that account have? So to answer the first part of this question, we really just need to contrast the definitions of simple and compound interest. Simple interest accrues only on the principal. So, for example, if I were to invest $100 into a simple interest account, which paid out 5% annually, I would get $5 in the first year, and in the second year, and in the third year. That's because each year I'm just getting 5% of the principal. In a compound interest account, if I were to invest $100 and got 5% annually, in the first year I would get $5, same as the simple interest account, but in the second year I would get $5.25, and in the third year, I would get $5.51. That's because each year, I'm accounting for 5% of the, of the principal and all previous year's interest payments. So if we were to illustrate this graphically, on the y-axis, we have money, and on the x-axis, we have the number of periods. And the white line represents the simple interest account. The green line represents the compound interest account. We can see that the white line grows uniformly, and the green line grows at a faster rate the further on the x-axis we go. And so quickly, the compound interest account outpaces the simple interest account. And our answer is that compound interest is greater than simple interest. The second part of the question is simply asking us to find the difference between the values of the compound interest account and the simple interest account. So the way that we would do this is by calculating the future value of the compound interest account and subtracting from that value the future value of the simple interest account. The future value of the compound interest account would be given to us by the expression 
present value times 1 plus the rate raised to the number of periods. And so we would just plug in our values of 5,000 times 1.05 raised to 25, which should give us $16,931.77. For the future value of the simple interest account, we would have to use the expression present value plus present value times the rate times the number of periods. So again, here we just plug in 5,000 plus 5,000 times 0 0.05 times 25. And that should give us $11,250. So the difference between these two amounts is $5,681.77. That is our answer. That brings us to the end of this video. Still confused? Rewind to the relevant part of the video by clicking on the sections listed to the left. For more, be sure to take a look at the Academic Success Center website, where you'll find tip sheets and tutoring hours in case you need a more face-to-face -face approach.